What's going on? It's your counsel, Polly Rob. Welcome to another episode of the Polly Rob Podcast. I appreciate y'all tuning in and always sticking with me. I know I've been away for a while. My apologies, but I am back. Make sure you subscribe on all the podcast platforms necessary. Uh, all your favorite podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn. We're on YouTube. Uh, everywhere you want to listen to it, iHeartRadio, we're on iHeartRadio as well. Uh, and make sure you subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend. We're in quarantine still, so I'm pretty sure you can pass along the information. So somebody can tune into my podcast and binge all the episodes. You know how I go, man. Um, I've been away for a while. My apologies. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, please forgive me. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit of about why I've been away. Um, First, let's get into some records and some updates uh, since I've been away. Uh, You know I've been working. Y'all know if y'all follow me on my social media or anything like that, you know, I've definitely been putting my work in. So we got some new music and some new updates I do want to share with y'all. And y'all can just go check those out. Um, We do have a new project that is, uh, that we put out about a week ago. Um, Shout out to my boy, uh, Doe Networks, you know what I'm saying? Uh, He put together this compilation called The Wolfpack Volume 1. I was uh, able to be a part of it, which I'm glad for. Um, And also one of the legendary producers of our time right now. Um, I got a chance to go back and forth with producing some records along with him on this project. Um, DJ Shea, DJ Shea from Gazelda Records. He's done... Um, records with Westside Gun, uh, Benny the Butcher, Conway, um, you know, the whole uh, big BSF squad, all the way down to Planet Asia, 38 Spash, just legendary hip hop dudes, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the Wolfpack Project is like, a, it's just a project with just a bunch of dope MCs that y'all know and might not know, but y'all will check out soon. And it's just nothing but bars. The concept of Wolfpack is, yo, we travel in packs and we got that work. You know what I'm saying? They putting in work, the straight bars, dope lyricism, fire. So make sure you go check that out on all your music streaming platforms like Spotify, iTunes, and every other, every other place. It's called The Wolfpack Volume 1. It's by Dope Networks and entirely produced by me, Polly Rob, the local astronauts, of course, and DJ Shea of Griselda Records. So make sure you go check that out. Um, it's nothing but bars. And I, I'm, I'm appreciative of everybody who's tuned into that. And let me know what's your favorite record. Like DM me or post a comment on my page or my YouTube. And let me know, you know, what's your favorite record. You know what I mean? I want to hear, uh, you know, what y'all think. Um, also, uh, I got a record I dropped about, uh, about a month ago. With my guy Drebo, shout out to Drebo. The song is called "What You Want to Do." It's a real bouncy, you know, vibe type of record. Feel good record. You know what I'm saying? You could definitely dance to. That's on all the streaming platforms as well. Make sure you go check that out. We will be doing a video soon for that for sure. Um, then uh, another record that's uh, coming out tomorrow is uh, put together by my guy Big Y, produced by me. Um, the record is called Hold On, um, Big Y for the Relatives, legendary Inglewood uh, MC, rapper and storyteller. You know what I mean? Uh, we did some great things uh, in this industry, which we uh, together, along with Wacko, shout out to Wacko, we put together a uh, Caddy Swag, Teach Me How to Dougie. Um, we did a bunch of dope records for a lot of different artists, and uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, good times then. And now that we're on new times, I got a chance to produce a record uh, with him and for him, for his solo project called Hold On. You know what I mean? The record is fire. It's featuring um, Gutter Lane Low, um, Young Cat, 
you know, he's a, a singer, songwriter, rapper. The man is dope. So make sure y'all go check that out. It, it'll be out tomorrow. Um, and then also, uh, big announcement, big announcement, big announcement. So, um, we haven't told anybody this uh, for the past, you know, 20, 22 months. We've been working on this. Um, very, very hardcore. We haven't told anybody, but now we get a chance to share it with you now that it's out. Um, Local Astronauts now has a TV streaming platform. We have a TV streaming company. Local Astronauts has a TV streaming company. And our first channel, a part of our company, is called BTSN. BTSN stands for Behind the Scenes Network. We have a channel on Roku devices and Roku TV and on Amazon devices and Amazon Fire TV. We have a channel called BTSN Pass. That's nothing but behind the scenes content, behind the scenes shows of your favorite actors, favorite artists, behind the scenes of studio sessions, behind the scenes of performances, sound checks, business, lifestyle, fashion, behind the scenes of everything. All the stuff that you never get a chance to see because they don't want you to see how it's done. We have a channel strictly for that. BTSN. Make sure you go to your local Roku TV and Amazon TV and download the channel. The same way you would download Netflix or Hulu, you would download BTSN. It's out right now. Go watch the content. We got a lot of content, a lot of dope shows. Make sure you go check that out. I am very excited to bring that to the table and we going straight to the top. So uh, congratulate me and my team. You know what I mean? We going up. We And congratulations to y'all for just tuning in to everything that I got going. I appreciate y'all and I'm trying not to get emotional. We have a TV streaming service. Let's fucking go. It's real, y'all. It's real. Um, so I'm back. I'm back. And once again, like I said, I apologize for being away. But the reason why I took a small hiatus is because one of my hard drives crashed. One of my hard drives crashed and I lost files. Oh, y'all don't understand how hot I was. You do not understand how angry I was. Any producer, any engineer, any artist out there in the world, y'all understand my pain when I say my freaking hard drive crashed. Let me tell you what happened. So I've been going in beast mode. I'm going in. I'm doing at this point, it's quarantine time, so I'm doing like 11 or 12 beats a day. I'm going in. On top of that, I'm having studio sessions respectfully in my studio with limited amount of people, a bunch of Lysol, a bunch of cleaning and pine saw and disinfectant and everything because you got to keep the studio clean regardless. But I've been doing sessions with some clients. I've also been doing sessions for some projects that I'm working on, working on some projects. So... In the midst of that, I'm just in this zone. I'm in this fantastic, creative zone. And on average, when I'm working, every two weeks, I back up my hard drives in the work that I've done. Um, I back it up two ways, which I'll explain that later. So I usually do that. But for this particular time, I'm so much in the zone and then sometimes halfway burnt out because I'm doing session after session and it's just a lot of stuff going. So a couple of days I crash and I got to get my rest. I, got, I have to really get my rest. I got to catch up on that. That's very important to me. That's very important to my family and very important to the future of me being on this fucking earth doing anything. So I had to get my rest. So one day I'm working, um, working with TF. Shout out to TF. We got some dope music coming. And then... Um, you know, he has one of his one of his boys, you know, shout out to TZ. It's my guy now. You know what I'm saying? Dope. So we had to record some records for him. 
No problem. Knocking that down. So, in the midst of recording the records, we beast and we beasted. For some odd reason, my computer freezes. And when my computer freezes, you know, your hard drive, the motor is going. And then all of a sudden, my computer freezes and the hard drive just abruptly stops. Now, I'm in mid recording. I'm recording him doing his thing. He laying his vocals. So normally when you're not doing anything, when the computer's idle, but it's still plugged up to the hard drive and everything, and then something freezes or it turns off, the hard drive is not doing any functions, uh, function, uh, uh, functioning at the moment. So it'll just turn off and it'll turn back on. But in this case, the hard drive is actually moving and recording the data of the vocals of what, what TZ's doing. And then the computer freezes, which abruptly stops that. Then I had to restart the computer. And then when I turned it back on, the freaking hard drive would not come on. The hard drive would not come on. Oh, my God. I was smoking. Because here I am with a client that needs to get his music done. I've got to figure out this hard drive situation. And I don't I don't want to tell him that the hard drive crashed, but I got to. He's watching it live and direct. I'm like, dude, we got to stop the session. My hard drive just crashed. I need to get these files back. So he like, he like, no, no problem, man. I appreciate TZ, appreciate TF. They wasn't tripping. They're like, man, we come back another day. We got, you know, I'm like, yo, let me figure this out. I get right back to you. So, you know, me, you know, I'm a computer technician. So I try my best to recover as much files as I can. Unfortunately, There's just some files that I couldn't recover. Now, there is a process where you're able to boot up the hard drive and get as much information or as much files as you can off the hard drive. Um, That's the working part. That's the still functioning part of the motor. The other half of it is the non-functioning part. Those are going to be the files that's the hardest to get off. Now, naturally, to recover a hard drive of this magnitude... Because the motor is shot, um, I gotta pay two, three thousand dollars for those hard drive recovery companies. And let me explain why. If you guys have ever seen any, you know, movies or TV or any crime dramas, you see when computers are busted up or they're burnt or stuff like that, there is an actual team that can recover the information off of the hard drive even if it's burnt, even if the computer is burnt. That is the same process for people, creatives or musicians or anybody dealing with entertainment to recover the same information. It's the same company. We all got to go to the same company. But they start off at $2,000, $3,000 to even check the drive and see what they can recover. And depending on how much information they recover... It's depending on how much the additional fee would be. So you, you can imagine how angry I am at this moment. You can imagine how angry I am at this moment. And I wanted to talk about this because at that, right, at that moment right there where I'm mad and I'm pissed, I realized something in my brain that every great creative goes through this same thing. I realize that every great creative goes through the same thing of when they're at their best moment and they're doing the best part of their creativity, your hard drive goes down and it's so discouraging. I'm not going to lie. I was very discouraged because not only have I lost a couple of session files for clients or lost some files of records I was working on, some of it, I lost the files to the recent beats I was just working on. 
So all of that beast mode that I've been working on, I lost the files to him. I'm pissed. You can imagine what's going through my brain right now. All of that creativity, all of those dope beats that, you know, that sampled so weird and crazy. I can't get that back. I can't get that how I did those beats. I can't remake those. It's just some beats you just can't remake. It's some beats you cannot remake. It's some songs you just cannot redo. The feeling is gone. So I'm pissed. And I realized in that moment, there are creatives that go through the same problem. So I wanted to do a podcast that talks about this type of situation. The hard drive panic. This is the hard drive panic. You panic when your hard drive goes down. You don't know what to do. Luckily, I have a leveled head and through experience of watching other people's hard drive crash on behalf of what they've done. I was able to salvage majority of my files and even still then just by the grace of God of me having a great career, I have the money to take my hard drive to those companies to get it recovered, which I did. So all is well. But in light of that, I want to talk about a couple of things uh, that I do um, to not go through that problem again. And I want to explain that to y'all because I feel like it's important um, in the midst of your creativity to know that you can get lost sometimes in, in, in the creativity so much that you forget the mechanics of organizing your work. That is a very important piece to your career puzzle is organizing your work, backing up your files the right way. Very important. So let's start off with let's just start off with production because I'm a producer. Let's just start off with that. So. Producers have there's three elements to saving files as a producer. And and everything that I'm going to say right now is all my experience. This is not law. This is not how it's supposed to be done for everybody. Everybody has their method. But let me explain to you my method of what I do so you can better understand how you could develop your own system. So number one, those beat files those actual beat files. That's number one on the list. As a producer, you have to have a folder that has all of your beat files attached to it. Now, for people who don't know what beat files are, beat files are the actual file that compiles all the necessary data and all the necessary sounds of what makes this production. So let's say if you play piano on this, you added a bass here, you added a sample there, and then you arranged it this way. And then you name the beat Super Supreme Beat One. That beat file, the beat file will be called Super Supreme One. And if it was a reasons file, I believe it's dot uh, RSN. Um, if it's if you make beats on Pro Tools, it'll be dot uh, PTF, which is the actual file name. Um, Fruity Loops, it'll be dot FLP. Um, uh, for native instruments, which I have, it's dot MMPR. So there's so many different file names, but the one thing you have to um, understand is you have to have a folder for all your beat files. You got to put your beat files in that folder so you know how to constantly go back to the beats that you've made. Very important. That's number one. Number two, sound folder. You need to have a sound folder. Now, the folder for sounds is it's a folder that all of your instruments, 
um, whether it's audio instruments, you know, a, a wave or a AIFF file. I know y'all don't understand what that means, but those are just sound files. So all of your sound files that you need to have needs to be in a folder. So the beat files can find those sound files every time it's time to pull from them. You need to have that. Got to have a sound folder and you got to know where it's at because you got to know how to go back and find your sounds. How are you going to make beats and you don't know how to go back and find all your sounds you're looking for? Even if you're experimenting with new sounds, they still need to be all compiled in one folder so you can look for them. And even if that folder consists of all subfolders, that's fine. I do that thoroughly. So beat folder. Number one, beat files folder. Number two, sound folder. Folder for sounds. Number three, and this is my most important one for me. I always have a rendered beat folder, a MP3 folder, a WAV folder. This folder is the actual beat song moded, even if it's for a minute or two, it's song moded in MP3 or WAV format. I prefer MP3s because WAV files are very large and if I put a thousand WAV files it's just a lot of space being taken up. So MP3s are smaller, so I use MP3s. But organizing a beat folder, so you got a folder for beats, rendered beats, MP3s, so then when you plan your beats for somebody that want to buy them or want to work on them, all you got to do is just scroll down and those beats will play continuously. So you don't have to keep loading up a Pro Tools file, loading up a Reasons file, loading up of a Fruity Loops file. You don't have to keep loading up a beat file in order to play the beat. You can just go through the MP3 and just press down and press down until they find a beat that they want. So first step into saving your beats as a producer is beat files number one, sound folder number two, and MP3 folder for the beats that you've already completed number three. You need those. Now, the reason why I do it that way is because I know that when it's time to start making beats, I know that the beats folder, every time I make something, I put it in the beat folder. I know that every time it's time time to add more sounds, I would research and find new sounds, make new sounds, and I would put it in the sound folder. And then when it's time to play beats for clients or play beats for somebody who want to work on something, I can go into my beat folders and I can play those MP3s for my beat folders. Easy as that. And you need to have that on a hard drive, an external hard drive. Some people prefer to put it on their computer. Me, naturally, I prefer not to have any major files on my computer because somebody can spill water in your computer and then all them files is gone. But the hard drive, sometimes, like me, I have a lacy hard drive, you know, and hard drives, you can protect them and have files on them. And, you know, if even if somebody messes with the computer, the external hard drive is still there and you'll be safe with your files. So that's a very, very important. Now, as an engineer, I'm an engineer as well, so I can speak from that perspective. Um... As an engineer, you need to have uh, folders for these different sessions. We're working on these different, you know, clients and artists. Me, what I like to do, I like to have a client's folder. A client's folder consists of all of my clients that I'm working with that are paid sessions. Then I have a folder for music that I work on with artists that I work with. Those are probably the sessions that um, they didn't pay for, or even if they did pay for, it's an actual full project we're working on. It's not anything that's like a quick, let me book some studio time and record music. We're actually working on the entire project. So I have a folder for that. And inside both of those, both of those folders are subfolders with the de- name of the artist and the actual songs that they did. Having that fully laid out and also having that on an external hard drive as well. That's very important because 
You got to know where to find all of these sessions. You got to know where to find all of these files. You know what I'm saying? And for me, that's what I do. And I, I usually have, I usually have my client folder or my, my client hard drive separate from the music that I've been working on with everybody else. I usually separate that because if I'm going to work with a client nine times out of 10, I'm not going to pull up nothing that I've been working on for myself or for other people that I'm working on projects with. Um, but vice versa, if I'm working on some, something with somebody that we're working on a project, I'm not going to pull up no client stuff. So I keep those hard drives separate. I feel like that's necessary. So number two is another way I save things. And this is what helped save a lot of my files that I was missing when my hard drive crashed. Dropbox. It's a company by the name of Dropbox. If you go on dropbox.com, Dropbox is a company that is a online cloud drive that's in the sky. So let's say... Let's say you have a Dropbox. You link your Dropbox to this folder that's on your computer or on your hard drive. You record into that folder. You put beats in that folder. You put sessions in that folder. You put sounds in that folder, paperwork, whatever you want to put in there. When you, when you put it in that folder and your computer is connected to the Wi-Fi, those files get copied into a cloud in the sky and it gets copied and every time you update that folder as long as you're on wi-fi it updates in the sky which means that if your physical hard drive or your physical computer was ever broken damaged or stolen you can buy another computer buy another hard drive and you can download those files in the cloud directly to your new computer and your new hard drive. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Just like that, I got majority of all my files back. Now, let me say this. I didn't get all of my files back because of one thing. I forgot to update my recent beats to the Dropbox while I was working on them. I did not connect my Dropbox to the computer that I was working on because I got a new computer. Of course, I got a new Mac. You know, I love electronics. So I didn't connect the Dropbox in full. So all of those beats for the that past two months, I lost the beat files to them. I have the MP3s for them, but I lost majority of the beat files for them. But all is not lost. I mean, collectively, it's about like, like about close to 100 beats. I was mad. I was mad for a second, but I'm not mad no more because I know since then I've done another hundred beats anyway. So I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. I probably those MP3 beats since I don't have the files for them, I'll probably sell them for like half the price or something like that. And you know we good. We straight. But that's a lesson learned. So I make sure that I I, I keep my Dropbox connected to my hard drive that has all of my files and my sessions on there. Because I want to be able to copy it on my hard drive, but then I also want to copy it in the cloud as well. So if anything goes wrong, if I lose my bag or anything, God forbid, that I can still download my files and still get back to work. A lot of my sounds, majority of all my sounds are in the cloud. And I'm happy for that. You know what I mean? And that's very, very important. And the reason why we're talking about this, because let's be clear. Let's be clear about this. And I see a lot of people's computers like, you know, on top of me doing my creative work, I'm also a technician. I'm a computer technician. So I work on computers. I know how, how to, you know, get viruses off computers. I know how to do uh, uh, fix computers, build computers. That's what I do. I'm a nerd. Sorry. It's what I do. So in the midst of that, let me say this, because I think a lot of people forget this. Computers is almost like an extension of the human brain in this regard. In your brain, when you have so many different ideas 
and you got a bunch of ideas floating around, your brain gets cluttered. And as a result of your brain being cluttered, you're unable to think logically. You're unable to process things that you're that you're thinking about or you're trying to do. You're unable to process it properly because you got so much going on. So many ideas floating through your brain. Same thing like a computer. When you have a bunch of files all over the desktop and then you got some vocals over here in this folder, then some vocals over there in that folder, and then some sounds over here in this folder, and then other beat files over here. It's the same way like the computer. The computer can't process and compute what you're trying to do when everything's scattered. So in order for you to make sure that your computer operates properly, you have to put files in order. You have to put files in order the right way. If you got photos, put your photos in the photo file. If you have paperwork like invoices, put your invoices in the invoice file. If you got too much stuff on a desktop, get you a hard drive or start putting it in a documents folder or something like that. Or the downloads folder. Don't have everything all over the desktop. It's, it's, it's equivalent to when you're driving and then your windshield got a bunch of leaves on it or a bunch of, you know, stuff on the, on, on the, the front glass. You can't drive like that because you got stuff in front of you. So it's the same thing like your desktop. Clear off your desktop so your computer can compute the right way. It's important. And this is the reason why we have a lot of hard drive panics because people get a hard drive and then they just throw it anywhere or they put a bunch of files on there and it's not organized properly. Remember, it's a computer. It's only going to compute what you give it. It's not going to do nothing out of the ordinary. It's only doing what you do. So if you make a mistake or you don't put things in the right place, the computer is going to make the mistake. Clearly, it's only reacting to the things that you do. And that's important to all my producers and engineers because you got to have your files in the right place. It's very important. Have it in the right place. Make sure you save in your files two or three times over. Have multiple hard drives. Like me now, I have two hard drives with all my sounds saved. I have another two hard drives with sessions saved. And they're all in my safe. And I have a, 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 another hard drive with my, with my beats saved. And it's all in the safe, you know, fireproof and everything. So if anything goes wrong, my hard drives is good. Because this is the part that you don't want to get to. You don't want to get to this part. The part when somebody listens to the record that you put out and it's a hit record and they want to give you some money for it to get behind it or do whatever. And they ask you where the file's at so they can remix it or do whatever so Jay-Z can get on it. And then you tell them, oh man, I lost the files. I don't have the files. Oh, that's your money out the window. That's your money out the window. Don't let it be somebody listening to beats and you're like, oh, I like that beat. How much for that beat? And you say $10,000 and they're like, oh, cool. Well, I'm finna send you the money right now. My, my attorney's finna send you the money. Let's just draw up the contracts and then, you know, send me the file so I can get busy on it. And then you say, oh, uh, man, I ain't got the files, man. I lost the files. Oh, that's your money out the window. The files is the most important part. That's, that's what people keep forgetting. The hard drive is the most important part of the process. It's saving the files and keeping the files saved. And don't get me wrong, we all go through this problem, but you have to, the same way you practice on your craft of creativity is the same way you got to practice saving your files and protecting your assets. 
You have to protect your assets, your files, the actual work, the intellectual property that you get paid from, that you retain ownership of. Get your hard drives, get your USB drives, get you a safe. Learn the methods of saving files and keeping them safe. Because you don't want to go through a hard drive panic. I've watched a lot of deals go bad and I've watched a lot of people, you know, just stop this music shit because their hard drive went down. They get discouraged and it takes off two, two, three years or months of their time and they feel bad. And I'm not going to lie. I almost got to that point just being super discouraged. You know, for me, you know, losing the files for 100 beats, close to 100 beats. But the one thing that I realized, and it's the last thing before I go. The one thing that I realized that made it to where I wasn't tripping that much was I looked at myself and I'm like, yo, Polly Rob, you was really beasting. You was really beasting and you can do it again. Hey, man, if you don't shut up and stop whining and do it again, that's what I had to tell myself. If you don't shut up and do it again and then do it again and then do it again. Not as in lose the files, but as in keep your creativity going. Don't stop because you got a minor mishap. Man, if you don't keep going, the files you recovered, great. The files you didn't recover, whatever. Keep going. Because guess what? No matter what you lose, as long as you know you can gain it back, you should be okay with yourself. If you know you can gain it back and you can do it back, it's all in your hands, you should be okay with yourself. And with that said, I am perfectly okay with my workload. Thank y'all for listening, man. I appreciate y'all tuning in. This is the Party Rob Podcast. Make sure y'all subscribe to all podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Podcast. Man, check me out everywhere. Leave comments. My Facebook group is now back active again. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you check out my Facebook group, the Party Rob Podcast discussion group. Um, my YouTube, I'm back on my YouTube. My kids made sure that I got back on my YouTube to do my thing. So make sure you go check out Polly Rob, P-O-L-Y-R-O-B on YouTube. And subscribe and like the channel and check out everything we got going, man. I appreciate y'all tuning in. More episodes of the Polly Rob podcast coming real soon. I'm on my grind workload mode. I appreciate y'all. Peace.